Hi, Saint St. Saint Michael's. Of course, you're not watching this vid video at the usual time. We had some technical difficulties connecting with Facebook and YouTube this morning. So we're grateful that you are watching our recorded service later on today. We will get everything ironed out uh, depending on if Facebook and YouTube cooperates next week Sunday. But again, thanks so much for your patience and joining us this morning. I pray that you have a spiritually enriching service as we present to you the second Advent um, Sunday service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please join me for the observation of the lighting of the Advent wreath. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. God, because you are love, your passionate desire to share our lives is with us. Help us, we pray, to acknowledge and turn away from anything that keep us from welcoming your presence. As we prepare for the coming again of Jesus, who was passionately committed to your vision of justice, stir in us a desire to be like him. Send your spirit to help us truly desire to create with you a word of peace. Amen. Please join me as we recite the Colic for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us now pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass, their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, Herald of good things, lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fail. Say to the cities of Judah, 
Here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is taken from Psalm 85. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second lesson, the epistle, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. A reading from the second epistle of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us now pray. Dear gracious Lord, into your hands our spirits are cradled. Under your authority we are governed. By your vision our earthly pilgrimage is redeemed. By your will, our joys, aspirations of being disciples in you are revealed. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of the, those who are listening now resonate at your feet. Made true, made alive by way of the gift of life. Amen. Good morning again, saints. It's so good to be with you again. And uh, again, once again, I am grateful that you are able to join us, albeit at a later time, but join us nevertheless. I'm always impressed as well as taking notes of the start of any gospel that we have we will see that each and every gospel in the New Testament, the beginning always marks the intention of the gospeler. It's also a signal to us how we should treat the particular gospel. We see at the beginning of the gospel of Matthew, what the writer outlines is the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Of course, starting with Abraham, and then ending with Joseph, and linking Jesus Christ with that royal lineage, and also that messianic outline of who Jesus is, that's the Prince of Peace, the Savior of us all. How about Gospel of John? John sets out clearly what he's about. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So therefore, everything that is mentioned in the Gospel of John rests on the Word of God. 
And there's a divine connection between the word of God and Jesus Christ. We see here in the Gospel of Mark, yet another proclamation is being made of who Jesus is. Yes, there are shrouds of his lineage and his identity. Yes, the power of the word similar to John rests in the Gospel of Mark. But more so, the Gospel of Mark is linking Jesus to the Old Testament by offering the promises that God made to the chosen people has now been extended to all of us. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then there are echoes of Isaiah 40 that come right after that. Does this sound familiar? See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Those of you who would have uh, perused the readings today will know that this was the first reading in uh, today's set of reasons, uh, the second advent. Here it is that Mark is saying quite clearly, in the beginning, in the beginning, the good news of Jesus Christ is that he is the Son of God. We know that when anything starts with the beginning, there's new creation, there's a new birth, there's something fresh, there's something of hope. Does new beginning sound familiar to you? Like Genesis 1, in the beginning, and then we have creation. What Mark is saying now is that in the beginning of our lives, and in the beginning of our earthly pilgrimage, it all starts with Jesus Christ. What Mark is also telling us too is that the promise that God made to the Israelites is being fulfilled. The prophet, the messianic savior that is mentioned in Isaiah 40, the ark of the Old Testament is now coming to the New Testament. It is Jesus Christ. When we think of this offering, we often see where Jesus connects with our own lives. At the beginning of Advent, we heard from Bishop Wright last week about the start of a new year, what it brings, the freshness of a new liturgical calendar. For us, it means bringing out our Advent tree, making decorations, starting a new year with light, with hope, with freshness, with outlook of what the new year begins. What Mark is reminding us, that at the center of all of the celebrations, here in the Advent season, it culminates on Christmas Day. It begins and ends with Jesus Christ. We see of the story, the beginning of John the Baptist. And for us, what is the good news? Beyond it beginning with Jesus Christ and the identity of Christ being the Son of God, what really is the good news? Of course, the good news is that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ, this you already know. The story of the coming of the Messiah in Isaiah 40 is being foretold in the coming of Jesus Christ. That's the good news. The proclamation of our faith that we have a holy trinity that guides our steps each and every day. That's the good news. That we have a, someone who listens to us. Someone who guides us. Someone who provides miracles in our lives by way of Jesus Christ, that's the good news. But is the story of the good news, is that the end? Is it that the proclamation of Jesus' arrivals and the many, many stories along his earthly pilgrimage, is that the end of the good news? The beginning that has been proclaimed by way of Mark as a new life in which we can enter in and enjoy the bask of being with Christ, is that the good news? Is that the end? When taken into context, this first verse in the Gospel of Mark just starts about the beginning. It's the start of the good news. But the good news of Christ lives in us, meaning we just have the heading of the story, the body of the story and the conclusion, they're still being written. We are the living embodiment of the good news. 
You see, the entire story of what Jesus is me- means to the world, we are living into that, but living into our own discipleship. We live into that when we proclaim the good news of Christ in our lives. We live into that when we offer a loving presence to those around us. We live into that when we speak of the godly truths of what Jesus Christ means in this world. The good news is not only of the coming of Christ, but the good news is when we are used in our bodies as the embodiment of goodness, that the good news is also being shared shared in this world. My invitation to you uh, this morning is to embrace the good news. Not that we have the advent of Christ that we are commemorating in this Advent season, a season that brings us so much hope and anticipation, and that the birth of Christ is just the good news. That's just the heading, the introduction. The good news is embodied within us in our daily lives, in our daily walk with God. The good news provides us with examples in which God's story of birth, of walking, of miracles, of reincarnation, of resurrection and ascension is lived in our words and actions each and every day. But first, there is no coincidence that following the proclamation in the first verse in the Gospel of Matthew about the beginning and linking Jesus Christ to being the Son of God and also linking Isaiah 40 with this story that we have the advent of John the Baptist. You see, we can't spread the good news and continue the story, this wonderful story that's being written every day without taking some steps on our own. John comes in and he speaks about how it, we can be one with God by baptizing those in the River Jordan, confessing of their sins, starting afresh. That's also a newness, a beginning. So therefore, it's one thing that we have this beginning in Jesus Christ. John is saying for us to start our own story, to walk with Christ, to be part of the good news generally, we need to wash away our sins, to be baptized, follow the example of being renewed in Christ. When we walk with Jesus, when our sins are washed away, we can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ with authority, with energy, with joy, with consistency, and validate our own discipleship in Christ. My hope this year, that when we reflect on this Advent season, and we reflect on the start of the new liturgical calendar, and we plan our lives spiritually with devotion in Christ, and as we learn and reflect on the beginning of the good news, that we take up the mantle and share the good news with others by way of our bodily presence, by way of speaking truth, by way of being examples of which others can follow that the good news of Christ is not only linked to the identity of Jesus Christ or the promises of God being fulfilled through the birth of Christ, but the good news is also our embodiment of Christ each and every day. Let us continue to be refreshed in that good news. Let us continue to be washed in that good news. Let us continue to be led in that good news because Those around us who are yearning for something deeper, something more meaningful, something more out of this world, are salivated at the opportunity to hear the good news of Christ. Not only being told by way of the gospel, but being told by each and every one of us that believe that the good news of Jesus Christ is life-changing, is eternal, Let us follow Christ in each and everything. Let the good news of Christ be the beginning, be the body, and be the end of us all. Amen. Amen.
Please join me as we recite the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of our Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us lift, lift up our voices to God in strength, saying, Be patient with us and prepare us, Lord. Together, as our church, we long to see your face Speak to us, Lord, as we walk through the wilderness, listening for the sound of your voice. Give our leaders patience, wisdom, and a heart for will. For, will. for Michael, our presiding bishop, Robert, our bishop, and Vincent, our priest, in your mercy. Be patient with us and prepare us, Lord. We pray for all who govern, especially Donald, our president, and for the Congress and courts of this land, guide the leaders of the nation as they work for the welfare of their people and the good of all in your mercy. Be patient with us and prepare us, Lord. Awaken us to the suffering of people near us and those far from us. Call, call forth in us a spirit of generosity and kindness. Equip us a resp to respond to their need. Arouse in us a sense of urgency to demonstrate your good news in our lives and voice. Voice it that all may hear. Make us messengers of your love in your mercy. Be patient with us and prepare us, Lord. We ask you to comfort those who have lost hope, who struggle with anxiety about the future live in fear bring healing to those for whom we now pray we pray for those who have died that their memories be blessing in our lives have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or tr trouble especially for the Ross family Joyce Kathy P David Wayne Devan Knees, Shahid, Orlando, Luis, Rick, the people of South Sudan, Traven, Vanita, Basmati, Floyd and Christine, Dorothy, George, Annie, Ruth, Doreen, Reith, Jackab, Layden, Amanda, Brad, Morris, Dang, Marlene, Denine, Jonathan, Anne, Carol, Pig, Joanne, Bill, Susan, Chris, April, Linda, Dawn, Shaista, Suleiman, Navid, Madison, Ardonis, and Edna, Ryan, Cherry, Yuan, Victor, Ricky, Bob, Howard, 
Maureen, Jennifer, Yannick, Dennis, Fatima, Barbara, Beverly, Heatherby. And for this assembly, as we serve the sisters and brothers among us, and as we work outside church doors, forget us not, O Holy One. Here, other intercessions may be offered. Let us pray to the Lord. That they may be delivered from their distress. Let us now pray. Heavenly Father, we have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in peace and love. Peace be with you. Once again, uh, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, I hope uh, that the Lord is speaking to you in a unique way, one that is lifting you up and filling you with joy. I'd like to uh, just make a couple corrections, uh, just highlight that. That we are, uh, hopefully, will be on schedule next week. And uh, we will be able to uh, bring you a live service uh, as we usually do. Of course, these are hiccups that we can't always foresee. And it's not on our end, it's on Facebook. But again, once again, for the third time, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we hope to be able to uh, join you live uh, next week when we are here back once more. If you have not submitted your pledge cards as yet, please uh, do so, um, so that we will be able to plan appropriately next week, next, for next year. Um, we have received um, some of the pledge cards, and we are going through the budgetary process to be able to offer the same programs that we offer this year, next year. So if you have not submitted your pledge cards for 2021, please either mail them in, drop them off at the office, or you could upload them through our online platform realm. <coughs> Have a blessed week and uh, may God continue to uh, be a source of light in your life. Amen. <laughs>
Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. Amen. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent, be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks for watching our video today. At St. Michael's, we are finding new ways to practice fellowship with one another and would love for you to continue to join us. Please like us on Facebook, visit our website, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find the links in the description of this video below. See you next time and God bless you.